Our sports teams were busy this weekend. Dan Moulette has some updates for you on that later. Plus, if you haven't purchased tickets for the homecoming dance, you'll want to act quickly before they run out. Details on that just ahead on Patriots Today. Good morning. I'm Riley Branson along with Raina Hartman. Raina, how was your weekend? It was really fun, Riley. How was yours? My weekend was okay. Okay, let's talk about tickets for homecoming. We already shared with you that the homecoming dance is being held on the USS Riverside this year on Sat Saturday, October 12th. The boat has limited space available, so there are only 68 tickets being sold to the dance. If you do the math, that's only 34 couples on the boat for the night. The tickets are $50 per couple or $30 for a single, and the boat leaves the dock at 7 p.m. for a three-hour cruise up and down the Colorado River. You'll want to get there early, though, because they're taking pictures at the dock starting at 6. The theme is rocking on the river, and the colors are navy blue, silver, and black. Speaking of pictures, school pictures are coming next month. CameraWorks and local photography studio will be here to take school pictures of all the students and staff on Tuesday, October 15th. You're welcome to bring a change of clothes for your picture, but you'll need to come to class in your school shirt and change back into it again when your picture is done. Staff members will also need to drop by and have their pictures taken as well. If you miss school that day, there will be a retake day, but it has not been scheduled yet. The first testing date for the Scholastic Aptitude Test is coming up on October 5th, but students who didn't get registered in time should be signing up now for the next one. The test will be held on November 2nd, and the deadline to register is Thursday, October 3rd. You can register online at sat.collegeboard.org for $51. If you are not able to afford the testing fee, see Mrs. Merrigan for a waiver. Additional testing dates are posted in her office as well. Smith's Food and Drug has a new program to help local schools. If your family has a Smith's Re Rewards card to earn points while you shop, you can register that card at the store and earn money for our, our school as well. Their Earn and Learn program has already contributed almost $17 million to schools across the country. To enroll, you'll need to pick up a letter from the office and take it with you next time you go shopping at Smith's. Simply give the letter and your rewards card to the cashier and they will enroll you in the program. You won't lose any of the other points you have in, while enrolled in the program. The Tech Club meets today in Mr. Nicklin's room after school. They'll be training for the, to televise the upcoming home football games next month. Also, they are planning a bake sale at Walmart on Saturday, October 5th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Stop by and purchase something good to eat to help support our Tech Club. The Book Club will also meet this afternoon in Mrs. Demers' room after school. They'll be discussing their latest read, The Murmurings, written by Carly Ann West. And that's it for school news, so let's try a little history. Lewis and Clark expedition returned to St. Louis from the Pacific Northwest in 1806. In 1846, the planet Neptune was discovered by a German astronomer. Musician Ray Charles was born in Albany, Georgia in 1930. There were a lot of games this weekend, so Dan is here to share some updates with us. All right, thanks, Raina. No news on Saturday's volleyball doubleheader against Ben Franklin High School, so let's go straight to football. The middle school Patriots took on Fox Street Junior High this past Thursday at Mojave High School Field. The offense is really starting to develop, and we're seeing some great efforts. Isaac Sagasta had a long return on the opening kickoff, and Daryl Franklin ran 35 yards from a pass from Emmanuel Muniz. Unfortunately, the Patriots were unable to get into the end zone during the, during the game, so the Falcons took this one. Bullhead Junior High is Thursday. Friday, the high school Patriots squad traveled to Phoenix to take, on, take off against the NFL Yet Academy. The Eagles quickly jumped out in, from, with a return from, on a beautiful kick by Robin Walton. They took advantage of the momentum to grab, a main, grab and maintain a strong lead early. The Patriots offense didn't take the stage until the second quarter with an effective run game that unfortunately came too late. Our defense couldn't stop the Eagles passing game and special teams and offense both gave up a touchdown. Final score, 50 to 12. Coach Agosta noted that he was playing shorthanded with numbers of athletes present at the game and several more fighting illnesses on the field. Joey Reardon was injured early in the first quarter and was, a, one, was unable to play for the remainder of the game. The coach says his team is looking forward to the bye week, which will give them 
time to heal up and ready to play again. So that's going to do it for sports today. Not the greatest news for the football fields, but there's always the next game. All right, thank you, Dan. Let's check out the lunch menu for today and then back to the news. And we close today's new cast with some news from the rest of the world. The Little Red Schoolhouse may be on the move. The first school in the Bullhead City stands today on 3rd Street in, Bull in Old Bullhead, just down the hill from Mountain View Elementary School. The Bullhead, City, well, the Bullhead City Elementary District is working on an agreement to transfer ownership of the schoolhouse to the city, which plans to move it to the Bullhead Community Park where it will go on display as a piece of the area's history. A sweet spill in Hawaii is causing quite a stink. As much as 1,400 tons of molasses has leaked from an old pipe in the Honolulu Harbor belonging to the Matson Navigation Company. The State Department of Health and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency are taking water samples, collecting dead fish, and monitoring the spill. As of last week, more than 26,000 dead fish and other marine life had been collected from nearby waters. If you've already bought the new iPhone 5S, then you're probably bragging to your friends about the new finger fingerprint scanner It's keeping your phone safe. You might want to hold that thought. A group of German hackers, the Chaos Computing Club, is claiming that they've cracked the scanner on Sunday, just two days after Apple launched the technology. The Touch ID feature not only unlocks the phone, but allows users to make purchases on iTunes simply by pressing their finger on the home button. Apple is marketing the scanner as a feature that sets the iPhone apart from its competitors, and they face major embarrassment if the hacking claim is verified. And now for the word of the day. And that's it for Patriots Today. We'll see you tomorrow.